Hello, um, so my name is Mrs Hartness and I'm Head of Geography here at Budehaven and I just wanted to um, talk to you a little bit about what you might um, get from an A-level with us um, in A-level Geography. So A-level Geography at Budehaven, um, I'll just leave this slide here for a little while. Um, obviously I love my subject and my department loves their subject um, and we feel that it's a great subject to do at A-level. Um, but I think as well, it, ha it is highly regarded um, as an EVAC subject and one that is applicable to lots of different um, university degrees. So even if you don't want to do geography at university, which hopefully you will by the end of the course, um, it still has a lot of use, um, you know, depending on which careers you want to go into. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. OK, um, I'm also going to bring up the department as well in terms of results. Um, so in 2019, as you can see, we were Alps 2. Um, now, what this means is that we were in the top 10 percent for our results in geography at Budhaven across the country, which is pretty outstanding. Um, and I think that's a commitment of the staff um, and the students. You know, it has to be a two way relationship. The students worked really hard. Uh, the staff worked really hard. Um, and we got excellent results and we've been um, Alps 2 and 3 for quite a while. So you can be confident that if you decide to do geography with us um, at Budhaven, we are going to get you the best results that we possibly can. Okay, okay so what is the A-level geography course? It's what we call a linear course, which means that you get all your exams at the end of two years. So there's no AS topic. All right. Um, it does include um, coursework, so you get 20% of your marks will be on what we call um, the NEA, so the non-examination um, assessment. Um, and also, legally, we have to provide four days of fieldwork. Obviously, under COVID at the moment, that's very difficult, um, and it has been um, abandoned for a year. Um, but at the moment, it will be back in for when you start the course next September. Um, this is down in Coombe Valley. Some of you might recognise the stream um, where we take our students to do some river fieldwork. OK, so what will I study? There are two elements to the course. There's the physical geography paper and the human geography paper. Uh, these papers are long, two and a half hour exams, 40% um, of the qualification each. Um, so over the course, we have to build up your resilience. Uh, you have to answer three essay questions on both papers worth 20 marks. But you do get a mix of short answer and medium length answer questions as well, which I'll go over in a sec. But I thought you'd probably want to know what topics we study first. So everyone studies water and carbon cycles and changing places. Um, so water and carbon is really just as it sounds. So the water cycle, how it works. And then again, the carbon cycle and how it works. Um, and within that, we look at a river basin and how water gets from the mountains to the sea. Um, and we look at the carbon cycle and how carbon is transferred from the oceans to the atmosphere um, and the influence of climate change on the carbon cycles. Um, coastal systems and landscapes you've done at GCSE. So we, we start off with that topic actually in year 12 because it's a nice um, icebreaker. Um, because you know some of the basics already from the GCSE. So coastal systems and landscapes is looking at how the coast works, looks at coastal management, looks at the implication of global um, sea levels rising. Um, and we have a look at the coast as a system rather than just looking at one beach. We look at an area of the coastline and see how managing one beach might have an impact on another. Um, and then hazardous earth is all about earthquakes, volcanoes, wildfires um, and hurricanes. And again, some of those you've done a little bit on at GCSE. So it's um, a really nice physical topic. Uh, then we have the human topics as well. So there's a balance between both. So the changing places is all about the nature of a place um, and how it's changed over time. Um, we look at rebranding of places like Plymouth um, and how they try to reinvent themselves sometimes, especially at the moment um, with all that's going on. You know, places are going to work harder again to try and attract visitors. Um, global systems and governance is all about globalisation of companies, of industry. Um, and it's looking at how those systems are managed. Um, 
It also looks at international trade. So if you're doing economics as an A-level, it works really well. Um, and we look at the ideas of TNCs, interdependence and the global commons. And global commons are areas that are owned by more, more than one government. So that would be looking at places like Antarctica, how they can be managed, how important environments like Antarctica can be preserved. Um, and then the final one is population and the environment. And again, this is a topic that we haven't really done at GCSE, um, but it looks at the dynamics of population, so what makes population grow. Um, and at Beauhaven, we haven't really done that since year nine. So it's a new topic, very interesting, very current. Um, we look at the idea of um, disease um, and population and resources, and are we becoming overpopulated? Um, how important is it to balance food supply with population, um, look after the environment um, and looking at the futures of populations as well. Um, so, you know, that idea of overpopulation, what's going to happen in the future? You know, are you an optimist or a pessimist? Um, do you think we're going to continue to grow and be healthy and happy? Um, or do you think overpopulation will start to cause conflict for the, for the world? OK, so um, there's a good balance, I think, there in the topics between those that you've touched on at GCSE and those that you haven't seen for a while. Um, and that means that hopefully it will be really interesting for you as we go through it. To do that. All right, so as I think I mentioned a minute ago, assessment is based on 80% exam and 20% um, coursework. And the coursework is the non-examined assessment. Um, and as you can see there, there's a good range of questions. So there are some short answer questions that are only worth one or two marks. Um, but because it's A-level, you do get a lot of questions that are worth six and nine, and you will get those essay questions that are worth 20 marks. Um, now, what we will work hard to do is provide you with the skills to answer those questions and make sure you understand the rubric of the question so that you know what's coming. Um, but you do need to have quite good literacy skills in order to deal with that literacy component. OK, the geography investigation. So this is your NEA. Now, this is where you can pick a topic from the syllabus that you think you would like to um, study and, and do a project on. Now, most of our students do a coastal project because we live on the coast. Um, but we have a range of topics. So some people are doing change in places topics. So they're looking at how um, viewed has changed. They're looking at how migration influences the population structure of a village like Maram Church. Uh, some are doing infiltration capacity of different surfaces, how much water can drain through different surfaces on, uh, for example, a farm landscape and the different types of um, surfaces and slopes you would get in that area. Um, we have some comparing two very different environments in view to see what their characteristics are. So we have um, students comparing places like um, Ferries Avenue with Ocean View Road um, to see whether or not the geographical models that they've learned about actually work for little settlements like Butte. Um, but really, you can pick your topic. So if there's something you're really interested in, as long as you can collect some primary data, go out and collect some data on it, um, you can do something. And it's likely to be from the local area. Um, but, you know, you can have a discussion with your teacher. And if we think it's viable, you can um, plan on ahead. OK, geography is not geography without field trips. And obviously, you've been restricted in what you can do since you've been doing your GCSE. But what we would hope to do is get you on a residential trip to London in the summer of year 12. And this was a group from um, a couple of years ago. Um, and the reason we do that is to do your far away place study. So uh, we do London and we do viewed in changing places. So this is a good opportunity for you to go up and experience what London is like. Um, and, and to see the places that you're actually going to complete some field work on. OK, so what do you need to bring to the course? We would like you, please, to achieve at least a grade six in your GCSE. OK, but the main thing is enthusiasm. You know, do you enjoy the subject? Have you enjoyed it at GCSE? Have you enjoyed the nature of the work? Because the work is going to be similar. You're going to be doing far more independent study than you would have done at GCSE. We're not going to hold your hand quite so tightly. 
Um, but it is important that you enjoy the course, all right? Because if you enjoy the course, you will be motivated um, and you will do well. And we're going to be checking up on you to make sure um, that you're doing that work. So, you know, you know what we're like. You've had us experience at least one of us um, over the last five years. Um, so we are going to do the best for you. But, you know, you have to do the work as well. Uh, OK, why study A-level geography? I think, as I said, it's an amazing subject to do. Um, obviously, I'm biased, um, but it is classed as a facilitating subject, which means that universities and employers like it because they know that you've learned a range of skills. So you would have been doing your field with skills. You would have been doing your data analysis. You're going to be able to inter interpret charts and graphs. Um, and all of that is really important to a lot of employers, especially in the kind of um, work environment that you will be entering, where people change careers very frequently. Um, what could you do at the end of the course? Well, we will say that geography is a multidisciplinary subject, which means that really you could go into anything. Um, I think I said on the GCSE presentation that a lot of my friends are accountants, which seems really weird. Um, but, you know, you could go into all those areas below. So um, the armed forces, if you wanted, psychology, environmental science, oceanography, uh, business law, media, politics. You know, it's endless, really, because you have lots of um, skills which can be applied to any type of um, any type of job, nearly any type. OK, so I think that's it for me, really. If you have any further questions, please get in touch. Um, my email address is there, but you also have Mr Hartness, Ms Leverton, Mr Tyrrell, um, Mr White, and all of them will be happy to talk to you about the course and what it involves. Um, we have a little summary topic sheet if you want to know some more about the topics, which you can collect from us in the department at school. All right, so thank you very much for listening. I hope that's all made sense and um, hope to see some of you in September.